Hello everyone! Welcome back to another uh, devotion and Bible study today with me. If you are new, my name is Ariana and I do have a YouTube channel so um, it is up to date now, thank God, because it took me some time. Um, but I just praise God for the different ideas that have helped me uh, be able to be more efficient in that for you guys. So. I'm back today. Um, all of my videos, I put my notes and my verses from it um, onto the YouTube channel and then I will send the link above in the description. So today we're talking about just being aware of God's presence and embracing it, being content in whatever he has for us at this time in our lives. So we'll just get right in. Let me know your feedback and if you need prayer or if you'd like to get to know me. I am um, always striving to get to know others and help them in any way that I can. So here we go with today's devotion and I just thank God for this, um, this message. It says, open your mind and heart your entire being to receive my love in full measure. So many of my children limp through their lives, strived are starved for love because they haven't learned to the art of receiving. This is essentially an act of faith, believing that I love you with boundless everlasting love. The art of receiving is also a discipline, training your mind to trust me, coming close to me with confidence. Remember that the evil one is the father of lies. Learn to recognize his de deceptive intrusions into your thoughts. One of his favorite deceptions is to undermine your confidence in my unconditional love. Fight, a fight against these lies. Do not let them go unchallenged. Resist the devil in my name and he will slink away from you. Draw near to me and my presence will envelope you in love. So powerful. Such a great reminder um, of who God is and what he really is trying to prepare us and build us up for. Um, because not only do we need to be aware of him, but we also need to be aware of the enemy and know that there is this big conflict between flesh and spirit um, or soul, should I say. So we're going to get into some scripture. There are a few verses um, that are in here. So we go to Ephesians 3, uh, 14. We're going to start at appreci um, appreciation of the mystery. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God now to now to him who is able to be exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all the generations forever and ever. Amen. I absolutely love everything in there. Um, you know, just this unconditional love that we think about, it's hard for us to really grasp because we are human. So even from a parent perspective or even from a spouse perspective, um, to love one another is it's very hard to see it as God loves us. 
I did do a devotion on this, so I'll put that um, link above, but it's all about God's love, and there's a lot of different scripture verses in there that I did, um, just explaining from what God's words are, and what he has said to us about his love for us, um, it just blows me away every time, and I don't think we can ever truly grasp it, other than just knowing that he calls to love us no matter what, and he is the creator of who we are, and he is with us moment by moment, and he could be, he even, um, there was another one that said that it, he is, he is infinite, so he, it's like, it's just you and God, it's just like him and one person at once. It's like nothing else is ex existing. It's just he calls us to be in his his presence, just, just the two of you. I think that's amazing to think about. So we'll go into Hebrews 4, uh, 14 through 16. So 4... This is under our compassionate high priest. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points temptation or Tem, uh, tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, let um, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Oh. God is amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you went through. And he knows us. This is why he had to deal with it all so that he could understand from all angles what people go through. He had to um, experience the interaction and um, those momentary moments of just connecting with the crowds so that he could feel it. He could understand them more. Um, I think that God is amazing. He definitely understands us all. But I think through Jesus and living here as a human being, there was just more that was opened to all of us. Um, there was just, there's, there's a foreverlasting um, experience and I guess foretaste or um, just, I don't know how to explain that. And I, I, I need to go more into it, but I think we can all grasp that through Jesus' life here, there's just something that was forever changed. Um, and I thank God that he did come down and he did do that uh, for us and for, for, I think, for himself, too, to really love and embrace and be life here in flesh. That, that's that got to be interesting to be the creator and come down and be the created. Hmm. Things to think about, right? Okay, so John 8, 44 says, this is Jesus speaking, so I'm actually going to start at 42. It says, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. We, or when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and 
the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, and you do not believe me, which of you convict me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. And I think this is a big warning for us because there is... the. The devil has the right to rule over people and over the earth. Um, he has come to do that, and God allowed that because God is more powerful. God has already fixed it by bringing us Jesus. So it is between us now to fight those battles because he even gave us the strongest weapon, his spirit um, within us for discernment, to fight with his words, his promises. And we have an ultimate already victory that has been conquered for us. So it is, it is for us to maintain that and know that God is our refuge. So we can always go to him and we have his word. Um, this is, again, suit yourself up with the armor of God. Um, and God warns us to, you know, fight these spiritual battles because they are real. Then James 4, 7, 8. Let's see. Oops, I passed it. Okay, area, where did you go? <laughs> James. I have such a small Bible, I should be using my other one. <laughs> this one's too small. And I know it's like a really small spot too. So after If only I could remember them all. Hey, I'm working on it though. There's some of them I can remember. I'm trying to um help my memory too. So there's James 4, and this is under um, Humanity Cures Worldliness. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you, uh, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to, go to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And I think this is really big because worldly ways can make us feel very um, extravagant and adventurous and um, fulfilling when it's only momentary. And then after that, we find ourselves in this dark spot where we're um, feeling convicted, we're feeling like we should have repented and we should have known better. Um, so God warns us to just shake it all off, go to him, let him transform you. I talked about this the other day. Transforming you, um, getting you away from the worldly desires and worldly pleasures so that you can already have that distaste for the worldly ways not in a judgmental way to others that's not what I'm saying but be armored up and already have those um, the mindset of what is right and what is wrong and what is worth it what it's not worth it and what God says I know that for me, when I started getting into the Word of God and I started really trying to meditate on what He's saying to me and how He calls me to live, uh, the worldly ways, like watching TV, um, even when it comes to like drinking, going out, having a couple of drinks, like 
uh, even putting on makeup and just hiding myself um, and walking with the crowd, I've found myself really enjoying just doing arts and crafts or, you know, reading a book, going outside, getting dirty with the kiddo. Um, like, I didn't need these worldly things anymore. I could just embrace my creative side and that um, family time rather than seeking all of that in the worldly ways. Does that make sense? I hope I hope that um, has helped in some way. Um because I just want you guys to be hopeful that there is so much influence in the world, but you don't have to be influenced by the influences in the world. So there is one more devotion, um, and it's called Content with God. Um, verse from Philippians 4, 11, 13 says, Not that I was ever in need for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have I now know hold on my love I now know to how to live on almost nothing or with everything I have learned the secret of living in every situation whether it is with a full stomach or empty whether plenty or little for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength and it says, it could never be said that Paul had it easy. Maybe you can relate to what he went through. His life was riddled with ups and downs. He faced hardships and successes, agony and abuse, rejection, as well as acceptance, shame, but also joy. Paul had made huge mistakes and caused tremendous pain that uh, scarred his past. His first changed his or his life changed dramatically after he met Jesus. He began to help others and learn to share himself vul vulnerably. Instead of bullying his way to victory, he would sometimes go hungry. Instead of being celebrated, he would sometimes suffer loss. Yet because of Jesus. Paul found contentment. He learned that no matter his circumstances, he was grounded in who he was because of who Jesus was in his life. He found confidence in what he was called to do because of what Jesus was calling him to do. Hopefully you found your inner strength today in the life and power of Jesus Christ. Yes, one second, baby. During your difficult moments, Jesus was ready to strengthen you. During your exuberant moments, Jesus was ready to focus you. If you had a typical day, it was probably much too easy to get distracted by your circumstances and lose focus on the source of your true life. No matter the circumstances you had today, and no matter the one you will face tomorrow, may the Lord be your unwavering source of confidence and peace. And there is a prayer, and it says, God, help me find my sense of worth, my sense of peace, my sense of identity in you. Let me trust you fully for the contentment I see desperately seek, so desperately seek in my life. S um, Savior Jesus, you are truly all that I need. Right now, give me a deep breath, a calm heart, and a content, a contented soul. In Jesus' name, amen. And there is a question of the day that we can ponder on. What are the biggest things at the forefront of your mind, and how could you entrust these to Jesus? So my friends, I felt like this was just a beautiful, uh, strong message just to remember who God is, how much he loves you, and that you can come confident, confidently to him with anything that you are going through and find peace in those moments. So I love you all. Thank you so much. It's been such a blessing to be able to share this message with you. I hope it has helped you, and I would love your feedback. 
Um, and I will talk to you guys again soon for another devotion. So God bless and take care.